All the woodwork is beautifully done. <laughs> this, this, this architect really did something different. We haven't seen anything like this, this sort of creative approach to things. This boat is very livable. It's a great design. I think we found a real winner here. Hi there, this is Captain Q. Join us as we travel hither and yon to show you some great deals on some really interesting boats and maybe learn just a little bit with each one. Captain! I hear you. <laughs> hey. hey, buddy. Hey. Come on down. How's it going? How did you find me here in Georgetown, Maine? Oh, it's tucked at away. At the Robin Hood Marina. Listen, I'm glad you're here, though, because this is a really fortuitous moment. Fortuitous? We like fortuitous. Doesn't happen very often, but in this case, just look over my right shoulder and look at the stern on this boat. Ah, I get it. Now, what would you say? It's a fortuitous day. Yes, a fortuitous day. And uh, I've already stepped aboard this Choi Lee Offshore 41, built in 1978, designed by Ray Richards. And uh, actually, Sea Dog has already gotten aboard, as you can oh, see. I see that. But notice as you walk along the side of her here, dark flag blue hull, painted. It's got a couple little scrapes and things in it, but nothing that wouldn't polish out, I'm sure. Notice the teak on the boat. It's all been done with sea tall, which is easy to maintain and doesn't chip and peel the way varnish does. Lovely cut water to her bow. And as you turn back and look back at her, look at the wonderful shear and the pleasant line of her deck going back. Notice also, since we're standing here, how smooth and clear her decks are. Now, Choi Lee, this was built by the Choi Lee Company in Hong Kong, love teak. They have a lot of it over there, so they put a lot of teak on their boats. This boat was smothered with teak deck. It was great, but the teak eventually wore out and they had to deal with it. So what they've done here, something we've talked about before, is they've stripped all the teak off the deck and they put a nice finish on it, complete with a little bit of non-skid in it. And you've got a, a pretty, good, pretty good grip there. Notice the forward hatch here. There's two things about that. One is solid wood. Uh, it's not all plexiglass, so it will, but it does have a porthole, so you've got some light in the forward cabin, but it's also raised off the deck by almost three inches, which means it's probably going to be a very dry hatch. Forward, you see a CQR sitting off one of her bow rollers. There's two bow rollers up there, and all good heavy stainless craftsmanship for the hose holes there, the, for the dock lines and so on. Uh, and the durets, notice the durets here. These are really solid. A lot of the American versions are more of a sheet metal. This is, these almost look cast, but it's just a heavy gauge stainless that they use over broad. We come to the forward part of the, of the main salon, and that's the main hatch over it. And it's, if you think about it, it's in sort of an unusual place because uh, it's so far forward. But I think you're going to be surprised when we go below. You notice. What is the most obvious thing that's different about this boat than any boat we've seen? Uh, maybe the wooden spar? Exactly. These are Sitka spruce. They're made out of four pieces of wood plus some inner, inner wood inside them. They're hollow, and some people think, oh, I don't want a wooden spar, it's going to break or whatever. These wooden spars can sometimes outlast the owners of the boats. Mm -hmm. We love our cockpits. This is where we spend 80% of our time on the boat. There's a simple all-in-one electrical package here with GPS and radar and everything all controlled into it. It doesn't have a gigantic wheel. This is more than adequate to steer this. The engine controls are single Morse control down here to the right. They've built a little platform in here. Then you can stand on that and see right over the top. But even sitting down here, I've got great visibility. If I were motoring along right now, I'd be very happy. If you're sailing and actually under sail, this is, this is great here. If I'm down to leeward and sailing the boat, uh, I'm in, in great shape. And if I'm up on the windward side, then I still am going to have visibility. I can even sit partially on this and be able to see forward without having to sit all the way on top. So this is a, a very good, well thought out design cockpit. Here with the mizzen mast now. And again, you can get a bit of a close up of it and see, see what the wood looks like. And on this boat, and I'm going to presume that these are the original spars, they could have been replaced, but uh, 
I have a feeling they're the original ones. Here's a little step to give you a step up to help you get to the top of the mizzen when you're hanking a halyard on it. You sure that's not a bottle opener? I am sure it's not a <laughs> bottle opener. <laughs> and notice as I stand here at the wheel, I've got great visibility. I have uh, the ability to move. I don't have to duck. I can just walk around that wheel. And if I'm sailing by myself, I want to come over and adjust the traveler. There's a nice traveler right here, midship's cockpit. I can pull the traveler port or starboard and reset the, the main where I want it. Trim in the main sheet. Here's the main sheet right here. And I'm still right in the confines and the safety of my uh, cockpit. So here. with a catch rig, do you ever get annoyed with the line of sight with the mizzen and being in front of you? Well, if you want to stand right behind it, uh, that'd be kind of dumb. <laughs> But no, not well, really. Well, that's what I do. I do dumb <laughs> I stuff. I know, Randy. I'm trying to get you educated too, and all these kind people out here. But um, no, uh, it, yes. I mean, obviously, it's a piece of wood right in front of you, and you know. But you do have the the boom in your way, so you're obviously always going to stand to one side or the other, uh, or sit down. If you sit down, you don't notice that it's so close to your face. Here's a bilge pump. Here, you put the handle in the hole and then you pump and you can move oh i don't know probably uh 20 or 30 gallons a minute with that now here's something i haven't seen for a long time you just pop this open and the spring holds it to close it you just break the spring and it closes up small point but it's fun tons of anchor line here and storage in here so there's a <laughs> seating for a crowd you could put nine people in here not that you ever would want that uh, i don't think i have nine friends you probably <laughs> I'll loan you some. Oh, wait a minute, I gotta find them too. This, this, this architect really did something different. All the woodwork is beautifully done. And the first thing we notice is that there's no galley right here, right? Yep. And what do we see over here on the port side? Oh, we've got a nice double quarter berth. Double quarter berth, right. There's a lower one and an upper one. Great place offshore, making a passage. Uh, to fit in there. And the nice thing about it, and we're going to see this repeated on the boat, is that it's easy to get into. We've got the uh, Captain Q measuring stick here today. Well, you brought it with you? It, it, <laughs> I, I tried to leave it at home today, but it said, I'm coming with you. Sort of a stand-up chart table, and that can be kind of handy. Other nice thing about it is I can see where we're going. The guy says there's a buoy off to port, then I can look out this, this port light and... Uh, I'll see the buoy, and it will match up to the, to the buoy on my chart. Now, that's pretty neat, but I also notice here, too, there's a fitting down here that's going to take a pipe, and on that pipe, there's going to be a seat. If so, you're lucky. So, if you're lucky. Uh, the floor, I can't, it's a teak, and it's been varnished, but it has a wonderful patina to it that, that comes from use, and, and the use has been uh, covered over with uh, proper varnishes and oils, and it's really, really attractive. We're a 41-footer. You always like an aft cabin, right? I really do. Okay, well, we give you an aft cabin here, ah. and just take a peek in there. There's a very large queen-size double berth. The ceiling on this, too, Right here, it's all been uh, finished. This has been really maintained well over the years. There's no old stains or anything. The wood is perfect. And overhead, there's a giant hatch with handles on it and so on. And we're gonna open up that and we're gonna have a flood of air coming through. Now here's the one thing I'm gonna do with it. We're gonna use a Captain Q measuring stick. All right. The nice thing about this, a lot of people may not appreciate this. You'll see quarter berths on boats and you'll see aft cabins of the boats. But they're all set up so that you have to kind of crawl out one end of it. This is set up like your bedroom. You come over and sit down on the edge of the bed, and then you swing around and put yourself into the berth. Okay? And there I am. In the berth, uh, there's a little piece here that'll put a headboard in here for you. And I can, uh, I can get very comfortable here and maybe we can finish up the shoot later on. Yeah, I'll just leave you in here. I'll just leave, leave me in here. I'm, All right, we'll see you. I'm swell, thank you. <laughs> you just scoop back a little bit, put your feet right over the side of the bed, not off the end of it. Well, we have right here 
Look at the size of this. This is huge. Now, this boat only has one head. It's got a shower, a handheld shower, nice teak grate down below, uh, a little porcelain bowl, and this is another feature. These are some of the small details that are picked up in this boat that are really remarkable. First of all, notice the head. When you're enthroned in the head, a lot of these boats will put the head just thwartships. Boat hits a wave, you can get blown off this throne and through that door. And it's not fun and it's not pretty. And I'm wedged right in here. This is, this is a very small detail, but makes a lot of sense. The other thing too, you'll see a lot of little storage compartments for the crew to put their dock kits and so on. These shut just like they were put in here yesterday. Just clean as can be. And the condition of the uh, hull uh, painted inside. It's really, really sweet. I'm going to step out into the main salon. The head is located at the, at the point of least motion in a boat. Great location for a head. And on the port side, the galley. This boat is just so well thought out. You've got fresh air coming in through the port and you've got a giant hatch overhead. So ventilation and, and all the heat here will dissipate up through here or through the upper hatch. All these slide and work very nicely on the boat. Everything as loose as can be. And nice little finish work. It's just, it's just wonderful. Front opening. Oh yeah. And right oh, here, oh, wow. using the old fashioned sort of latches that you find on mega yachts and so forth. Look at that. Look at that nice front oh, yeah. opening, clean, sweet smelling. Sometimes you can open these and something comes out and bites your nose. <laughs> I like two sinks. We have hot and cold running water. And again, two sinks we like for washing, rinsing. Whoa, look at that. There's everything you want to right here at your hands. In 2004, they put this new Yanmar in. So what do you think about the access compared to some of the other 40 plus footers that we've been on? I, I would give this a, a, a real plus. Easy. One thing that's uh, dawning on me is that this is right over the keel. Great. God, you're getting smart. Mm. Uh, yes, the engine weight is center amidships. So this is right down into the curvature, the wine glass curvature of the lines of the boat. It's a remarkable, clever design. We have uh, what we've been looking for for a long time on one of these boats, the fireplace. Uh, this is a uh, new port. This is, uh, this is propane. Uh, and that'll light up. There'll be a nice flame in there going right up. This is all pretty new. There's no rust or anything. It all looks like it was stainless. And uh, it has a perfect spot here. It just looks like this is the place you would have a fireplace. Take a look at the chain plate, the massive chain plate uh, attachments there. Solid as, solid as a rock. This is the most unusual layout you'll find in a, in a, a relatively modern boat. Uh, these leaves pop up on the table. This is almost an 18 foot long open space between the companionway and this forward bulkhead. You can see how far back you go. Keep going, keep going. <laughs> there you go. Randy's gonna disappear pretty soon. But I don't feel like I'm on a 41 foot boat. This feels like 45 feet at least. But this is wonderful. These leaves come up that leaf is going to go right down and sit on the lip in front of that seat. And you will then have the biggest bunk, the biggest berth on any boat in America. It's huge. This is <laughs> it belongs in the Poconos. <laughs> this could this could work very nicely in the Poconos. You do have this forward cabin. I just let Randy stick his camera in there. Oh, this is pretty unique the architect refers to as toe over toe. If you notice, there are regular rectangular berths there, but one goes under the other. And it really is a very clever idea. It's a great design. I'm just gonna flop down here. This is a really comfortable berth. How are your feet at the bottom? <coughs> oh, you got They're not even touching. They're nowhere near the bottom. I've got lots of room. We haven't seen anything like this, this sort of creative uh, approach to things. Yeah. Oh, could you bring my lunch down to me? Yeah, what do you want to drink? Uh, whatever you got. <laughs>
So today was fun for me to actually go aboard and see what this unusual arrangement below decks was all about. Well, we found out today when we came down, we found her sitting right at the dock waiting for us. And we stepped aboard and we were just dazzled by how well she's been kept to date. Her teak on deck, on the spars, the Sitka spruce spars, the general maintenance as you first come aboard the boat, you have a good feeling. Again, we love cockpits. We spend how much of our life there? A lot of it. And this was a really comfortable, nice cockpit offshore sitting at the dock. We found an aft cabin that's big enough to get on up and, and put on your pants. Then you look up and you see the main salon with two curved settees, the largest double bed, totally apt if it was dragged off tomorrow to the Poconos. And she was really pretty sitting in the water, a really pretty cut water to her and her counter uh, was they were perfectly balanced. I love a boat with two masts and it could be a yaw or it can be a catch and this happens to be a catch and that is just such a great rig to go cruising with. This is just really uh, a swell find. She gets the 10 and this one definitely was floating because she was in the water when we saw it. <laughs> Extra points for the unique design and layout of the lower decks and one that would be fun to live on uh, for extended periods of time. So she gets a 10 and she gets a full bat 6.5 uh, on top of that. I'm not even certain why I don't go up and give it a 20 except this particular boat has not gone around the world yet. If you want to park this boat in Boston and head up down east and head up to Portland and Harpswell and Booth Bay and Camden and Mount Desert and Eastport and then maybe off to Nova Scotia, do it. A great family cruising boat, terrific boat. So glad we could get on board. I'm really glad, and it was truly fortuitous that you made it down. If you like what you see, please hit the subscribe button. And if you want to be notified when the next one comes out, please hit the alert bell. And that's not desperate at all. That we're having too good a time doing these things. So uh, you can hit the bell or not.